All right. Next chapter in the book, Meet the Goddess of Good Luck. This will probably be one of the shortest videos in this course, but by far one of the most important. Starts out and talks about, if a man be lucky, there is no foretelling the possible extent of his good fortune. Pitch him in the Euphrates, and like as not, he will swim out with a pearl in his hand. That's a Babylonian proverb. Now, in here it goes through and it talks about, you know, what is good luck? Is there really someone who has good luck? Does she, does, does the goddess just give you good luck, right? Obviously, I believe in Heavenly Father. There's not multiple, you know, God of war, God of this, God of that, goddess of this and that. Um, but what it comes down to is a simple fact. If a man be lucky, there's no foretelling the possible extent of his good fortune. Okay, like it said. But what you really need to think about, was that man just lucky he got thrown in the river in the first place? He probably understood the Euphrates River has pearls at the bottom, so he understood his situation, thought it through, and as he was thrown in there, he thought, you know, while I'm here, I might as well go down and get a pearl. Okay? Do you kind of follow that concept there? Good luck favors men and women who take action. Not those who claim, woe is me. Not those who are talking about how everybody else is to blame for their actions. Okay, uh, In the book it talks about how the goddess of good luck smiles upon those who work hard, save their money, and invest well. The goddess of good luck doesn't patronize gamblers. You ever notice gamblers always end up to be poor? They're not using hard work. They're not wisely investing their money. Okay, A person must not procrastinate but must strike while the opportunity is right. Okay, Good luck can be earned when one's aware of the opportunity and prepared for them. We've talked about that. There's a difference between someone coming up and saying, Brother Stevens, I have this great idea. You need to go out and invest in these machines that take urine and turn it into drinking water. They're only 10000 bucks a piece, and every home in America is going to want one. I don't know the first thing about sewer treatment let alone doing that and turning into drinking water with a home appliance. I do know enough that the average home is not going to spend $10,000 to do that. Okay. And what about filtration? What about electricity? What about all these things I have no idea about? There's that example. Then there's the example of I know uh, cell phones. Okay. I know what I like about cell phones. I know what people like when they're buying cell phones. So if someone came to me and says, hey, I have an opportunity to open up XYZ cell phone store and I'd like to have you be a silent partner with me, I'd be more than likely capable of being able to make a decision very fast on that because I've already done the research. I've already gone through and understood what it is that I want to have happen if I were given that opportunity. See the difference between the two? One is a rash decision. The other is a well thought out, if, if I can do it, this is what I will do. So when the opportunity arises, I'll jump on it. That's when people talk about when they say the goddess of luck. Oh, Brother Stevens was so lucky. He just had this happen for him. Well, what did Brother Stevens do to get to that point? What did your parents do to get to that point? There are opportunities given every single person every day. But if they're not wise enough to acknowledge what the opportunity is, if they don't have the knowledge necessary to make it happen, then it would benefit them nothing if it was given to them. Heavenly Father will allow those who are able to, to succeed. I remember one time, I used to wrestle in high school. And I loved it. It was so much fun. Uh, you know, I also did cross country and pole vaulting and all sorts of other things. But wrestling for me, it was 100% of my muscles, right? Against another individual's 100% of their muscles. And it was hard. You were doing everything you could. And one time I was so worried, I remember I asked my dad for a blessing. So he drove me there and in the parking lot, he put his hands on my head and gave me a blessing. And I'll never forget the words. It sticks with me to this day. Allow him to perform to the level of what he prepared for. He didn't ask Heavenly Father to make me some super Herculean type muscle man and win. It was let me perform to the level that I had practiced for and prepared for. It's the same thing in life. If you're trying to become the CEO of a Fortune 500 company 
and you haven't let yet learned how to lead men and women to greatness, you will more than likely fail at that job. If you don't understand spreadsheets, then why would you want to go in and become the CFO of a company if you don't know how to manage money? If you can't bake a chicken, you probably shouldn't be the one cooking at KFC, right? Fortune favors those who are prepared. Men of action are favored by the goddess of good luck.